What's up, gang? It's your boy, Sensei Lake Love, the ball head, black anime nerd, back with my review of One Piece manga chapter 999. We only got one more, niggas. The sake I brew while waiting for you. It's a 10 out of 10 chapter. Like, there is no argument. A perfect chapter and I want to preface my review of this chapter with like outside of all the toxic ass power scaling that a lot of you niggas do and the agendas this was a perfect like this was an amazing one piece chapter a perfectly paced perfectly sequenced <laughs> like great chapter with a whole lot of reveals and shit that we care about world building all type of shit that was just top fucking tier bro chapter starts out um obviously we know from last chapter that we was well everybody speculated that we were gonna get an ace backstory lo and behold we get an ace backstory who the fuck would have thought i mean obviously once we found out the ace was once at wano we found we probably knew we were gonna get some insight on why he was here ace was here to kill kaido kaido wasn't there for some reason um him or any of the all-stars king queen jack none of them were there he was on the expedition so i'm hoping that we get a little bit more explanation to why he wasn't there but uh shout out to ace for wanting the fucking smoke <laughs> like ace wanted all the smoke um i think it's very key to note this nigga was not a part of the white beer pirates at the time um you can look at the panel and see that he does not have the tattoo on his back so the nigga was not a part of the white beer pirates this was just some, some tough guy shit he was on coming fresh out like his rookie year type shit like just on good bullshit let me pull up on kaido and beat his ass i heard he ran with my pops back in the day you know what I mean? Like, on some shit like that, runs into your motto, they have a fucking brawl, but they start bonding over little shit. Um, because obviously we, we could guess that these two niggas have in common that they both have harsh feelings towards their fathers. Obviously they come from two different sides of the spectrum because one of them father is dead, the other one father is alive, one of them knew them, the other one didn't, one's living in the shadow, the other one, you know what I mean? It's like a lot of differences, but that is definitely something that they can both bond on. Lo and behold, they both bond on that fact. And Ace is showing a lot of, like, he's getting so much characterization in this fucking chapter that I love. Like, I love Ace as a character, bro. I know a lot of motherfuckers just think that Ace is trash for whatever went down at Marine Ford. But I actually love him, and I love that Oda's, like, giving us more insight to, into him as a character. Like, we get to see more of just him. Like, again, outside of all the power scale and shit, I like that we just get to see him, how he was moving, how, like the, the, the people he was meeting, how he was talking to niggas, his drives and motivations and shit like that. So, you know, him basically talking, talking to Yamato and getting her, you know, amped up on some, look, man, I really want to join, like be a part of the sea. I don't want to do what my father wants me to do. I don't want to be under his shadow. I don't want to fuck with this nigga no more. He's trash, yada, yada, yada. Getting Yamato to like exclaim that out loud was Ace's goal. And then obviously we saw him how he punched that fucking dragon in the face and broke it, which is why they moved it. Um, but after that, you know, they were all buddy buddy drinking sake and reminiscing. And then we get a, just the explanation, more world building. Ace is talking about all the rookies that are coming up now. Obviously, this is like a couple years before Luffy left. So Cavendish, fucking Kid Law, Bay Gang Beige and shit was coming up. It was crazy seeing that he was seeing all of these names and he literally was telling motherfuckers like, them niggas ain't got shit on me. But <laughs> I hear they doing shit, but don't trip. When my brother come out, he that nigga, bro. I'm like, gee, this nigga Ace loved the fuck out of Luffy. And I love that. Literally, like, he he, he must have been telling stories about Luffy the whole time. Because even your mom was like, how many times you gonna tell him about your brother? So it, that, that whole sequence, that whole backstory was just amazing <laughs> to me. Like, I love getting more insight, more character development, more characterization for Ace, even though he's dead. That's just shit that I don't mind getting it. Like, I don't mind getting that at all because it just adds to my love for Ace. But yeah, everybody knows, like, Ace play, Ace played his role. Like, he had to die for the story to be how it is. But it's just, even in death, the effects of that shit is just so fucking crazy. This backstory is being told through Yamato to Momo. At the same time, we also have Nami talking to Tama about Luffy. Thomas telling Nami how they met, like, yeah, man, met this motherfucker, and then you got to talking about my homie Ace, bro, like, he, he's gonna tell me he died, he was all rude and shit, and Nami like, yeah, that's kind of how he is, but you need to know that this is, <laughs> Luffy is Ace's little brother, so 
obviously, again, Ace had been talking so much shit about his little brother, not shit, but like talking big up in Luffy as like, yeah, this my little brother, he's gonna be that nigga, don't worry about it, he's gonna come through and be the bullshit to everybody, including Yamato, Tama, all of them. So now it's like, oh shit, this was Ace, this is Ace, little brother. Like, he, I, I, the crazy thing is, I thought Tama knew that already, but apparently she didn't. So now she, she gets that reveal the same time that Momo gets the reveal that Ace was. Roger's son and Luffy's brother. Momo hitting this on two sides because Momo was on Roger's ship. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 that two-sided shit. And it was so crazy how they put that shit together for multiple setups. Obviously, they're setting up the relationship or the connection between Momo and Tom. Like obviously there, there's gonna be some future implications there. Them, them motherfuckers probably gonna link. <laughs> I'm not one to ship, but oh, there's like making this two fucking too in my face for me not to say that but also just just talking about the coincidence Yamato's like look man it's cr all of the pirates in the world bro all of the pirates in the world and you just so happen to bring ace's brother here the nigga who ace the nigga who came to kill kaido you didn't know but a nigga tried to, to save wano wano just, he just wasn't fucking here for it to be saved you run into this nigga's little brother two years after he dies and he has the same fucking goal they got the same initials it's just too much, G, and that shit is fire. Like, fire on top of fire on top of fire on top of fire, bro. It's amazing. I love I love the dialogue. I love those two things coming together. Momo, I also found out that <laughs> Yamato is fucking Kaido's son, daughter, whatever. He was obviously surprised about that, but she's saying, like, look, I don't fuck with him. Like, you know, look, I, I told you I'm old. Which was really tweaking Momo out. That scene was fucking hilarious. But all in all, I I, I love this sequence. I love the backstory to the you know learning of information for both Tama and Momo. It's just leading. It's just a, it, it adds to this already great fucking chapter. On top of that, we got Marco, who obviously we knew from the last chapter was going to take Zoro to the top. So that's what he owned. He's low diffing all of these fucking fodder. He transforms into a phoenix. Well, he blocks off the path so that Robin and Brook can dip off and get to the castle. So they're probably gonna help out. I'm 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 leaning more towards Robin helping Sanji. I don't know if I got Robin soloing. <laughs> I don't know if I got Robin soloing Black Maria, but I got her helping out Sanji. I don't know what I don't know what Brook is gonna do. I'm thinking Brook probably is going to stick around and help out Chopper. That makes the most sense to me right now. But if anything, he might help out Frankie. But I, I got hope in my nigga Frankie that he can take down uh, Sasuke. I, I, I got hope. There had been a, a picture surfacing around with Zoro with three swords in the mouth riding on top of Marco. Um, it didn't end up turning out like that. <laughs> it's more like he's using his claws to hold him by the shoulders and he's kind of dragging him from the back. Uh, pause. But Queen and King are still obviously obstacles. Queen, who was that long neck motherfucker he transforms and he's like I, i'm not letting none of you niggas pass but obviously you got it you can't fly so <laughs> i'm gonna fly past you and this is gonna basically run into a marco versus king situation because marco says in this moment i don't have any reason to go and fight kaido directly so he's ducking the kaido smoke which means he's gonna have to fight king so zoro's gonna get to the top probably the same time that luffy does and it's gonna be something crazy um, I love that in the midst of getting the mark, like Marco flying to the top and ignoring the bullets coming from Queen, he has a backstory himself. So we get two backstories in this chapter, <laughs> two backstories. And they don't like, you would think that because of Oda is Oda that these backstories would take a lot of time. Like, but no, like they, 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 they are very well fleshed out for just one chapter. It seems like it was two chapters in one G like this, is how raw this shit was. A backstory from when now Ace is on Whitebeard's crew still complaining about going to fight Kaido. Whitebeard's telling Ace, I know I told you a whole bunch of times, the last nigga that was in, you know what I'm saying? You know what happened to the last security guards. But the last nigga that was in the second commander spot, we had retired that spot a while ago because it was a nigga who was the homie, he was there and then he dipped, but I didn't want to really give his spot away, yada, yada, yada. Which just adds to how dope Ace was because you retired a whole, like, you know what I'm saying? You retired that whole position in your crew just to give it to this nigga Ace. Or he's spoiled because he's Roger's son. Ah, debatable, debatable, debatable. Them having that conversation, and obviously Ezo and them are saying, yeah, man, when we found out Odin died, it was several years later. I know a lot of motherfuckers in the community is like, why the fuck hasn't, what didn't Whitebeard or Roger or any of them niggas go pull up on Kaido when they found out he died, uh, or Odin died? Well, Oda says, let me address this shit, niggas. Like, so essentially he's saying, 
Yeah, we wanted to. Like, when we found out, it was several years later. Several could be any real number, but thinking about it in terms of, like, war and shit, and they don't really know the situation. They just know he went and had to fight a nigga who is Kaido. They know who Kaido is. He went and had to fight Kaido and died. And not only that, probably all his other niggas died because this is before the 20 years of them coming back. So at this point, they're all dead and they're all just a legend. And you just think we've been a run up in there and just like, you know what I'm saying? So like Marco makes the comment like, yeah, we wanted to go. But can you think about all the casualties? It was basically it would have basically been another Marine Ford situation. Obviously not to the scale of Marine Ford, because I don't think Kaido has all of the Marine power that was at Marine Ford. But yeah, it was going to be an all out fucking war between two fucking Yonkos. And we don't know what Kaido got over there because them niggas is closed off to the world. Not to mention the type of nigga that uh, Whitebeard was. He even in the Odin backstory was saying, look, man, I just want my friends, my family. I just want to chill. He's obviously aware that he's sick. The nigga's still on a on fucking a breathing machine or whatever. Like he, he obviously knows that it would be a challenge for him to do that. And then there's the pattern like. Yes, he went to go save Ace. The difference is Ace is fucking alive and not dead. And Odin is dead. Yeah, you want to re get revenge, but at the cost of your of the majority of your family, like Whitebeard has shown that that isn't in his, like that ain't his move. I just want to protect what I got. Odin left on his own. <laughs> Odin left on his own. And not only did he leave my crew on his own, he went to Roger's crew and then left Roger's crew to go back. So yeah, you my homie, but I can't give up what the fuck I got right now just because, you know what I'm saying, of what happened. It just would have been a stupid move. And I agree with him. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that at all. Yeah, we all wanted to see the, the big clash between Whitebeard and Kaido, but <laughs> at the end of the day, like I totally understand why he didn't go back, like why they didn't just rush to go back. But that's why Ace is saying, bro, just send me back. Shit, I got a promise to make. Obviously referring to what he told to Tama and Yamato. Like, I'm going to come back and I'm going to fuck this nigga up so we can dip. Like, I'm going to free you. You know what I mean? But I got to do that. So obviously, still showing that Ace has been a hot head. I th thought that it was interesting that they showed Teach talking shit to Ace. Like, oh, you just want to be the big shot, huh? It's like, ah, nigga. You snake ass nigga. <laughs> you snake ass nigga. But it's dope, G. He's playing his fucking role to a T, bro. But yeah, Ezo saying, yeah, take me with you. Marco saying, hell yeah, we'll go. Ace is like, yeah, you think you know, if we go right now, I bet we can beat him. Like, nigga, shut the fuck up. So Marco's reminiscing on this. And I just think that backstory was fucking great. It ends right there, and I'm just like, oh my god. But that's not the fucking end of the chapter. <laughs> because then we go to the roof. We find out fucking Zeus done charged up on all the lightning going around. Prometheus been eating all the flame clouds and all the fire going around. Big Mom and Kaido are having a conversation. So we get more into more of their motives, what they know, what they don't know. And then we get this fat ass fucking review. Big Mom mentions, don't kill Nico Rock. Obviously, everybody's like, bro, what the fuck? Don't you got, and even Kaido says, don't you got your daughter for that shit? Apparently she doesn't want to wait until she truly awakens. So this confirms that, yes, that three-eyed trap shit does, can for sure read the Ponic list. It just takes time. Um, so she said, I don't care what you do, just don't kill Rico, Nico Robin. Um, this, this she asks, where are you dropping this castle? I mean, where are you trying to drop on the Gishima? And Kaido says, I'm going to drop it on the castle. Big Mom immediately, hey, is it a Poneglyph there? Kaido like, nigga, it's too soon for you to be trying to get on that snake shit. Gee, like, just wait until we get there, then get your snake shit off. Like, that shit was fucking hilarious. Big Mom obviously saying, hey, nigga, don't, don't get on that with me. Are you still my little nigga. Like, you my little nigga. I'm your big sis. What the fuck is you talking about? And we find out when the shit went down for rocks at God Valley, Big Mom was the bitch who gave him his devil fruit, his mythical fish fish fruit. We don't know what the fish fish fruit is. Like, we haven't got the official boom. Obviously, Sunday when we find out what she said, it's going to be that. The theory is that it's a koi fish because there is a Chinese legend or a Japanese legend about a dragon gate, which is essentially a story about koi fish swimming upstream and then some going up a waterfall, most turning around, but the one that actually gets to the top of the waterfall, the gods grant the ability to transform into a dragon. So essentially, he would be a mythical fish fruit, like a mythical zone fish model koi or some shit like that, which essentially means when he got the ability, because the myth is the one koi can turn into a dragon, he would already be a dragon. Um, I don't think this makes him a fishman. I, I don't even want to go to say, I don't even think that he would be able to breathe in water or be able to swim, obviously. 
that, I just don't think that th that would be that far reaching because if his whole thing is wrapped around, I'm able to transform into a dragon. I don't think he can also transform into a fish. I think the legend just is a fish becomes a dragon after doing his task. A lot of people are saying, well, did, did Kaido swim up the, the waterfall of Wano and then just became a dragon? Like, no, nah, I don't think that was it either. I think the fruit is just, I am a dragon because I'm based off this myth of this fish that became a dragon. Extremely interesting. I, I, we've been waiting for this. That is a fucking reveal to drop on our heads, Oda, and you just fucking snap. $9.99 and you give us Kaido's fucking, <laughs> Kaido's devil fruit? I have no choice but to believe that chapter 1000 is going to be a rock's backstory. It has to be a rock's backstory. It has to be a rock's backstory. If you give me the God Valley incident, Oda, <laughs> I will cry, bro. I will legit fucking cry, G. Like, I, this shit is lit, bro. 10 out of 10 fucking chapter. It was excellent, well paced. All the reveals are smacking, bro. We, bro, next chapter is a thousand. I, I'm calling it right now. We getting the rocks back. Story. Let me know what you guys thought because it's a lot going down. It's a lot going down. Oh, also, shout out to all the niggas who think Shanti is now killing Kaido because he's a fish. Y'all are fucking hilarious. Y'all are hilarious. Also, shout out to all the niggas who said that Kaido is a fucking Gyarados. He's a Pokemon. That is also hilarious because he's also Pokemon. That shit funny as hell. Shout out to all you niggas, man. Like, comment, subscribe. Fuck with the kids, Sensei Lake Glove. Follow me on Twitter, at Sensei Lake Glove. Follow me on Instagram, at Sensei Lake Glove. <sighs> live stream coming next week, bro. I am live streaming. I am going to live react to Chapter 1000, bro. It's going to be real. It's going to be what it is. Just get ready. <laughs> Just get fucking ready because it's coming. Other than that, Sensei Lake Glove.